All right, so first thing I want to do is just kind of play around with um, some imagery. So I'm going to jump to my downloads folder here on my laptop. Let's see. And this is just, let's see, let's work with this one. I guess I always kind of do some sort of building thing, but um, this is actually just not too far from where I live. So it's pretty cool. And I saw this building and I'm like, wow, wouldn't it be cool to turn this into some scene or something? So I'm just going to play at the levels here a little bit, just a little bit, all right, something like that. And I need more clouds. So let's go ahead and fudge this. Um, I'm trying to think of the best way here. I could do a selection and then edit. Uh, it's not letting me do it. Oh, I think I need to rasterize. So let me rasterize this layer. Edit content to where fill. It's gonna pull from everything here. Hit okay. And it should give me clouds. If it doesn't, I'm gonna be mad. There we go. So now I got my clouds all the way to the top, fake enough. And on top of this, we'll just take our you know normal brushes and let's just sketch something in real quick. So I've got a little stencil here for the PS, the Photoshop. We'll use that to start. Um, let me sketch with a white or very light gray, something like that. I'm going to sketch in white. So I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if, if this old building was juxtaposed on some sort of modern structure? Roshan's asking if I've seen the movie Oblivion. Oblivion, yes, I have. <clears throat> yes, I have. To sketch like D Daniel Simon, I have to do 3D underlays, though, because that's what he does. So I don't think that's something I can or will do live today. But yes, he is he's is super talented, that's for sure. So I'm just trying to follow the perspective, right? So if I if I map these lines out like so, okay, you can start to imagine or envision some sort of structure attached to this old abandoned building near my house. And we'll we'll make some additions here, you know, cables, lights, whatever. Whatever we got to do, but just want a nice rough, rough sketch in place. Some sort of volume. Every time I run, so this is this is one of the buildings I see on my my route, and every time I run by it, I think, man, someone needs to turn that into a hotel or something. Super cool. All right, so maybe we'll sketch something like that. What's up, Tom? Hello. Yes, Tom is sketching shoes. I gave him an assignment on the Discord. He, uh, we have a channel called Show Your Work on the Discord. And Tom shared some shoes and I was like, all right, bro. I didn't say all right, bro, but I said, I'm going to give you an assignment. You're going to sketch X number of shoes, X number of times. And then let's see, let's see how you do. So hopefully that's been going well. And uh, you've seen progress. The idea there being, you know, the progress we see is oftentimes a result of the effort we put in. And sometimes you got to go more than just sketching something one time. Like you have to sketch it multiple times so that those proportions or elements or things start to stick in your head. All right. Just getting a quick underlay here, guys. This is Sketch A Day Live, Sci-Fi Sunday. Thought it'd be fun to perhaps <laughs> add to this the structure it's nearby, nearby where I live. So I'm just making a plan for perhaps some elements that I can put in here. Turn this into some sort of scene. Have I tried using Adobe Photoshop on iPad Pro? No, I haven't yet, actually. Um, I haven't heard great things about it, so I haven't tried, but I do have access to the Illustrator 
beta. I don't know if I can say that or should. <laughs> so I've been playing playing that a little, playing with that a little bit, I should say. Um, what's up, Rodrigo? Como estas? Uh, Latrice, good to see you as always. We are missing Lynette though. Lynette is usually here. The Discord server, Valentin, is listed on the YouTube video. So if you go to the YouTube, everything is there. <laughs> everything, all the answers to your questions are at that YouTube link. I know you all got YouTube on your phone, so don't be like, hey, he wants us to go to YouTube. How annoying. Or whatever. Okay. So maybe, maybe there's some sort of, I don't know. Structure things here, communications, towers, whatever this this building is. You know, you could have a vehicle parked out here, whatever. We're just going to use this as a guide to kind of paint some stuff in. One of my favorite uh, cities, someone asked me, one of my friends asked me this week, what's, what's one of your favorite cities? And I said Hong Kong, but I also love Taiwan. If you've ever been there... A lot of the buildings, they have um, conduit, things on the outside. Um, it's just very, what shall we say? It's like unabashedly <laughs> cyberpunk <laughs> in, in the appearance of things. So you've got cables, conduits, whatever. So we could use that as a template here, uh, maybe for some of the stuff. Also just watched, I haven't finished it yet, but part of Rise of Skywalker. Despite how you feel about those movies, they serve as pretty good inspiration. If you're doing any anything kind of sci-fi, super fun. Um, we might be able to replace these trees or move these trees, something like that. I'm also fighting a little bit with some glare on my screen, so my apologies. If I'm a little bit slow today, I'm gonna try and move faster than the car we did last time. Um, got some feedback that it took took a minute meaning it took too long to finish. So hoping to finish that up a little quicker today, but as always, just having fun. Okay, so I've got kind of a base sketch here. Um, I may change this, feels a little bit heavy on the left side. So let me erase a little bit here. Let's see. Yeah, it felt a little bit heavy on the left. Just keep it rough. Yeah, maybe there's some like tube, conduit, whatever that goes into this guy. Paint that all in. I gotta figure out how to finish this side though, that I'm not sure about. So probably leave this for now. Okay, we got some structure under here, which is good. So that's not floating entirely, but yeah, I'll work on it. Okay, so now I can drop the opacity of the layer down, even invert if I want. Um, oops, invert if I want, just so that I can see a little bit better. Or just drop the opacity. The fast way to drop the opacity, by the way, um, if you're on, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see this. So here's my keyboard. I can actually press one through zero on the keyboard, and that's going to help me move through 10% to 100% um, in terms of the opacity. Yeah, I'll fix I'll fix the vanishing point, Rodrigo. Good call. All right, so Rodrigo made a good observation that my vanishing point on the left is off. So let's go ahead and make sure we have that nailed. Okay, so there's kind of the direction of things and what's happening is the top is going like so. So what needs to happen is I just need to pull this in a little bit so that it feels more like so, all right? So I'll fix that as we get our painting in, but I appreciate the call out, good call out. I like to think I'm always learning here. I'm not, 
you know, putting out perfect stuff. If you want perfect stuff, there's people who do that. You can go check that out. But we do this together. So thank you. All right. Let's merge these down. Okay, so now my sketch lines are all in one layer. And what I'm gonna do here now is, so we have, we have this house or thing, and I'm gonna test Photoshop here and see if it works. So let's do uh, select, hmm. I'm gonna try something, I haven't tried this before. But let's do select subject. Okay. And let's see if it picks the house. All right, so it's doing its best to pick the house. And if you don't know that command, you should get to know it. It is amazing. If I hit Q, it's gonna give me a quick mask, however, and I can just come in and quickly, let's see, let's pick a, just a generic brush here. But I can quickly paint and modify this selection. Like so. So whatever you paint in black will be deselected. Whatever you paint in white will be selected. So you'll notice that my color in the palette, I'm switching, changing, change the brush size, whatever you gotta do. We're just gonna try and move fast here. So I don't want these bits selected. like that you can also hmm I hope this works let's see select try to remember how to do this uh, modify nope um, give me just a sec I think it's edit Anyhow, there's a command to refine edges but I'm not gonna worry about it right now maybe one of you guys know one of you guys who do tons of photo manipulation. I used it the other day, but my memory is like a sieve. So I'm just gonna do this the quick and dirty way. Make a selection there. All right, so now I'm gonna copy this layer, duplicate, paste down, whatever. Um, Diana is asking about um, reviewing 3D CAD software on iPad Pro. Um, I could. So far, I don't. I'm not impressed enough to say it's worth my time to do that. So we'll see. All right. So I've gone ahead and looked at the image here, and what I'm trying to do is play off the lighting from the scene. And since my structure, I think, will be gray or some uh, offshoot of gray, I can just pick a gray from the scene, and now start to. Oops. Okay. So pick a gray here like so, and then on this new layer. Actually, better yet, let's use the polygonal lasso tool and we'll just map out the colors. Just get a rough shape in. There, Rodrigo, I fixed it for you. All right, so now I've got this color blocked in like so. Paint in the rest here. All right. And there's our sketch. We can turn it on or off. And I'm gonna lower the opacity even more on this sketch. And whenever I'm doing these, a lot of times I'll just use the polygonal lasso tool because, well, it's pretty fast. I actually didn't need to block that out. Um, but here, for example, these areas that are a little bit shadowed underneath the structure, I can make a new layer fill it with black and then modify the opacity to get what I want. Although, okay, it does need to be behind this layer, right? I also have some stuff I need to cut out here. So this feels a little bit more 
plausible. And once we have our base colors in, I'll start to just paint on top of it, add textures, all that good stuff. Thanks for joining. This is Sketch A Day Live. This Sunday. What day is it? I don't even know. May 17th, I think. Rodrigo says, I've tried to do the same exercise and I have problems matching the photo. Yeah, um, if you, so you have to think in terms of value. So, oops, if you, why is that not working? Ah, that's why, okay. I got my sky here. So the sky needs to be right there. All right, let's merge those. Um, as long as you're thinking in terms of the value, the color value of the image you're working with, you can change the hue and you're fine usually. And this is something you can even do with a mouse. So because I'm using the polygonal lasso tool, right? And now I may want to kind of modify the boundary here. You know, if there's, See, let's make sure I'll pick. Okay, so I, I may want to like come in and add some variations if there's stuff, you know, so it's not a uh, perfectly straight line. On Sundays, I like to do sci-fi stuff. So that's what we're doing right now. If it's not your cup of tea, you're in luck. We do this on Wednesday as well and on Friday. Got a bunch of shows for you, all right? Sometimes we do nature on Sunday as well. I've been thinking about doing some watercolor painting. Lots, lots of exciting things happening. I'll just say that. Lots of exciting things. All right, so we got this pipe thing. Um, I guess I could... No, I'm not going to. I was like, I could construct a perfect ellipse and do all this stuff, but let's just keep it fast. And I'll rename this and call it Sketch Scribble. Because that's what we're working with. If you are watching on the YouTube, I am on, uh, or sorry, Instagram. <laughs> I'm on YouTube. Or you can catch the full thing, okay? If not, it's all good. It's cool. We can still be friends. All right, so I've got some base color down. Let's turn this off, see how we're looking. All right, and again, the goal here is to kind of match the shade, tone, color where possible. So here I'm trying to imagine, you know, like if this thing is sticking off, what does that look like? Make sure I'm on the right layer. I do have a layer that is black, which is this layer and the opacity is just modified. And with this layer, I can start to, I can start to draw in details on top of the whole thing. Okay, so if there, let's see, if there's some sort of cutout here, for example. I can fill that in. I can add some part lines. Some sort of structure. I have no idea what the purpose of the structure is. Maybe it's some some sort of generation generator thing. I have no idea. If this is your first time to the stream, be sure to hit subscribe, turn on alerts. I also upload the sketches at the end of the stream to the Google Drive. Okay, and that link is in the YouTube video description. It has sketches going all the way back to June, or sorry, January. So if you've missed a stream, you wanna know what kind of things we sketched, you can find the date. 
and then go from there. All right, so that's what we have so far. So now let's start painting with some light. You know, maybe we have some light catching edges that we need to, to put in here. And I'm gonna pick the roof on this guy because I do want to exaggerate a bit of the lighting as well. Just want a new layer. Now I can play with different brushes. Let's see, I'll just use a generic soft brush for now. I don't think my brushes I've been working on are ready for, for prime time yet. All right, but here, just taking some white, paint the edges, okay? And you can play with the opacity and also the blending mode. Okay, play with the opacity, blending mode, start to pull out things in your scene. If something needs to be a little darker, you can do that as well. So this undersurface here probably would be a lot darker. Along with that, I'm going to go ahead and increase contrast of some areas on my sketch. Let's make sure this blending mode is set to multiply. Interesting boat that landed on that house or what, or is that not what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Remy. Thanks, Mao. Welcome. Just doing something a little different. Once I get the base color down, then it's a lot easier. People always, sometimes I should say, people ask, oh, have you done you know, stuff for movies, TV. Yes, I have. Um, I certainly have. So this is partly the process if I'm doing that. All right. Okay, so I just wanna, on top of this, start to add, you know, maybe there's some other stuff happening. Cables, conduit, whatever. I'm just blocking it in right now. So I have that base color and now I can start to just paint in other things. Keep it super sketchy. Almost made another mistake there, Rodrigo. Now that you pointed it out, I'm like on edge. Can't have Rodrigo calling me out again. Rodrigo. Sorry, I'm terrible. <laughs> Rodrigo knows that I mess with him all the time. So Sketch It A Live, thanks for joining. Being here, being a part of this. So I think at this point, I'm just gonna start um, just value painting, as it were, just pulling out details where I can. I'm assuming a two point perspective just for the sake of simplicity here. So all my vertical lines, I'm trying to keep actually vertical, as opposed to a three-point perspective that would have more of a taper. And 
Maybe there's some stack on the top here. I don't know. Play with it a little bit. All right, so now I've got that in the scene. Let's see, I really do have to decide what I'm doing with the front. I have no idea, frankly. So let's go ahead and take some black. And just in here, kind of figure out what's happening. Maybe there's maybe there's some other windows or things on the structure. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. I am. Beautiful, beautiful day. Morning so far. I guess afternoon now. All this stuff I'm gonna back off on the opacity. We're just gonna lay keep layering and building up. We'll eventually have some good, good uh, texture, contrast, all of that good stuff. Fear not. Sketch Today Live, thanks for joining us on Sci-Fi Sunday. <laughs> Geese says, seems legit. Well, thank you. Thank you, Geese. I think you're, you're, you're in the Netherlands, right? If I remember correctly. Somewhere there. I don't mean to put you on blast and have people show up at your door, but I'm trying to remember. All right, I'm actually, I'm hoping this turns out good. I don't know just because my tablet screen has tons of glare right now. So it's kind of hard, hard for me to see a little bit what's happening. So I hope it's turning out okay. Create a little texture here. So I'm trying to wait to use like my main tricks, textures, all that stuff that I pull in till the very last bit. Okay, I'm to see how far I can get with just my brushes. I've gotten a lot of requests for Photoshop brushes, so. I'll just say stay tuned on that one. I don't mean stay tuned today, but you know, make sure you're subscribed, have those alerts on. Good things are coming. Just to maybe sketching a couple more elements in the background here. Help this thing feel a bit more part of the scene. line is but I'll get rid of it <laughs> okay so <laughs> if we want to see what it was before there it was there it is there it was there it is okay so we're just adding on top of this so now I can kind of pull 
from the environment to start to light this. Um, this object is behind the house, obviously. So I'm going to make a selection here and make the opposite selection. And now I can use this to mask everything if I want. So on the group itself, I could use it as a mask. Um, but I think what I'll do is just maintain that selection just because I haven't been the most organized. So taking a nice soft brush now, nice big soft brush, we're going to add some shading to our object here. Okay, now remember you can always play with the opacity if need be. Actually, what I should have done here, let's go back a couple steps and I want to multiply my selection. So now just this object is selected. And let's get this layer right down here. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> Definitely not bad living here. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't trying to um, mess with you necessarily, geese. All right. So play with the opacity. We'll drop that down. Oh wait a minute. Oh okay. And layer order is a little funky here. The problem with not being organized. <laughs> is sometimes you just forget where everything is. There we go, okay. So sometimes you forget where everything is, so you kind of have to um, come back in and make it work. All right, so on top of the structure, we're adding some shadow. Now I want to play with some light. So I'm just going to pick the color from the sky a little bit. Am I adding anything to the foreground? Uh, I could, I could. Maybe something over here. Robot, car, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, so picking, picking this light gray and now if I switch my layer blending, well, I'll start with overlay for now, but I want just that bluish light on these surfaces. Okay. Or on our pipe here, actually, I'm going to use, use another brush for this. Where are you? There we go. So I'm gonna use this. Mm, yeah, let's go ahead and use that. Just a dirty airbrush. And now I'll start to just add highlights where I need them. Also a great way to just add some texture. We'll have another layer that we use to <laughs> Black Ross Robots Robo statue. Maybe. Maybe we'll do that. But a great way to just add some texture to the drawing. Painting. Whatever this is. If I make it really big. You know, then I can get some texture going, drop the opacity way down. Oops. Keep painting, just build up. Yeah, the perspective on top here is a little bit weird, so I'm probably gonna have to fix that, which is kind of annoying, but. Maybe I can get away with a little cheat if Rodrigo's not looking. Apparently he has an eagle eye. All right. Uh, let's see here. Just checking how long I've been going. Okay, cool. So we're making all right time.
Ooh, windmills. <laughs> That's right. What more could you want with all that? That is so true. All right, let's switch to a different brush and play with it. Um, like I said, my apologies, guys. I'm kind of mid-process of doing some stuff. All right, so <laughs> lots of good stuff coming, but I'm not the most organized today. I'll just say that. All right, just keeping a, keep uh, building up some value here. Have a plan for the lighting on the front. Not too worried about that. We'll just paint over what was here. This will help this all blend a little bit better. Oh shoot, I dropped my little paper here for the Instagrammers. Yeah, if you want to catch the full thing, head on over to youtube.com slash sketchaday.com. It's where I'm hanging out today. Just doing a quick photo overlay sketch. It's actually somewhere close to where I live. So if you know where this is, don't show up and try to try to uh, get rid of me. <laughs> that would not be, I almost said, YouTube's just really touchy about what you say. So I always try and be, be careful. Hopefully you guys caught the Friday show. Um, I had a friend of mine, Saul Santos, join the show, did a little interview, and he talked about his career as a footwear designer, just the idea of you know, being a good person, hustling, working hard, all those things and how they pay off. So um, hopefully you caught that. If not, I will be uploading the replay later. Once I get a minute to breathe, it's been going nonstop lately, but it's good. You know, when work is fun, it never feels like work, which I guess is somewhat dangerous at the same time because you know you need to take a you need to take time off from time to time as well but i am certainly having fun and i hope you guys are i am almost to the point where well i do have one student signed up um i felt like it was time to start offering tutoring so if that's something you guys are interested in hit me up we can talk about it it's kind of on a per case basis right now. So if you're interested, let me know. So yeah, just, just building up values here a little bit. Painting is a little bit different than sketching in that you kind of have to work to build your values, textures, and so forth. You know, so I'm just trying to get get a nice base mid-tone here, and then we can start to add the contrast and whatnot. Mauricio, am I using a new Cintiq, and did I already make a review? I have not made a review of it. Um, I can. For sure. Remy is asking, what am I trying to accomplish? So I started with a photo like that, and I'm trying to add to the photo to create some sort of sci-fi looking thing because it is sci-fi Sunday. And I just thought, you know, it'd be fun to do it. So that's what I'm doing. We're just painting, having fun. 
It's not not your traditional industrial design, product design stream today. So imagine if there was a an older home or structure rather and then you know kind of decided to add to it that's that's kind of the vibe I'm trying to create here so starting with a photo allows me to have the perspective already set up if you're fortunate enough to have a Rodrigo around then they can correct you on your perspective and make sure you're doing it the right way. <laughs> so yeah, here I'm trying to just get values and color, right? So I'm pulling from the scene a bit, trying to pull in some of the colors. That way it feels more cohesive. You know, even the green from the tree here, super helpful. Let's zoom in a little bit. On these, I like to start by drawing um, a little zoomed out. And then as you get closer to the, to the end, I'll show you my hand on the overhead so you can kind of see what I'm doing and how fast I'm moving. But um, <clears throat> once you have the values, you know, those base colors, it's a lot easier to then add to your scene, add elements, things, you know, maybe these are some wires. And we'll come back and add highlights where we need them and so forth. But um, that's basically how I'm working, what I'm trying to do here on our stream today. I do have my hand on the keyboard in case you're wondering. Oops. Go back to that green, okay. So yeah, a little bit of painting. You know, painting is one of those things I've always struggled with. And so um, <laughs> for me, a bit of this is a uh, learning experience, but also hopefully a little instructive for you guys, a little instructive, I should say. All right, start with your mid-tone value. And then add your highlights, shadows, come back, mix, you know, think about the surfaces things are resting on. So there's probably a few more steps here. Um, not a few more, a lot more, um, you know, part lines, then we'll add our like lighting effects, stuff like that as we go. Monotech says, I'm far better drawing figures or comic art in different styles than I am in drawing cars. Yeah, you know, I I try not to shy away from challenges. Um, this exercise is challenging, so I totally feel you on that. I wish I could draw figures better. Um, I, would, I would argue or contest that figures are something that industrial designers don't typically do well. I have friends that do, do it well, so before you fire off that email or message i'm an industrial designer and i do figures <laughs> i'm just saying it's typically that we don't do these things well as designers industrial designers specifically just heard someone join the discord so welcome the idea of the discord is i want to build a community of like-minded people who enjoy sketching visual communication and you know if you need the help support whatever there are people there that that uh are just as passionate they'll help you out answer questions there's the show your work section on the discord as well so that's the idea um you'll be able to get that help that you need or want rather what do I miss from drawing on an iPad? Um, it's been, you know, that's such a good question. Thank you so much for asking that question. That comes from uh, Sven. So I once, when the iPad Pro came out, I was like, I'm not using a Wacom again. 
you know, this is this is bunk or whatever. And I hadn't touched a Wacom in, I don't know, three years or so, at least. And then I picked it up and I was like, wow. <laughs> and no, they're not sponsoring me to say this. It's, it's not like a thing or anything. Um, but as soon as I picked it up, I was like, oh yeah, that's, this is nice. <laughs> Like they know their stuff um, is what I'll say. So it's like my my thing finished here on the on the Instagram. Sorry. Give me just a sec, guys. All right. Well, it's there now. Um, let's see. Assignment one completed. All right, Tom. Good job. Now you just need to repeat it <laughs> as many times as it takes. Just kidding. I, I, I can look at uh, what you've submitted and I'll give you some more feedback. But Tom's, Tom's on the Discord. Super active, always submitting stuff. Um, people are giving him feedback and stuff. So if you, like I said, if you want to be a part of that, check out the link in the video and you'll be able to join in, give your own feedbacks if you want, or just receive feedback. A long time ago, I had a forum and a bunch of stuff, but people don't really use forums nowadays. So the Discord for me, it's kind of the way to, why is the flow being interesting? Okay. I want the opacity down, there we go. All right, there we go. I was like, why is this brush behaving weird? Somehow I was adjusting the flow and not the uh, opacity of the brush. All right, so I'm just shading this in, but I will add some light to this, I think. Just trying to imagine what kind of cutouts might be here, that kind of thing. Are repeatograph pens really worth the, worth the hassle? What do you mean by hassle? Tell me a little bit more about what you mean, and then I can answer your question better. So Sketch Today Live, thanks for joining. Sci-Fi Sunday, how we do. On Sundays, I like to do sci-fi related things. I like sci-fi. I love drawing robots. If you followed me for any time, um, you'll know that. Uh, let's see. Put like some beacons here or something. So I'm just gonna paint in. Or maybe this beacon should be in the foreground. Maybe that's what it should be. I'll do a couple in the foreground. I'll figure out what this looks like in just a sec. I'm using a prototype brush, you could say. Yeah, it keeps adjusting the flow. That's really weird. Normally it adjusts the opacity of the brush. Um, anyhow, just using a prototype brush here today. Something in the, in the foreground. Kind of help the scene out, frame things out. We'll just leave this as a placeholder. Although I did paint it on the wrong layer, so I'm gonna have to remove that at least to a certain point. Let's just select it, put that on a new layer, and now I can add my little cable lines here. 
And maybe another one of these beacons closer to the structure. Dumb question alert. Is the Discord community more for students or is that your targeted demographic in my community? Um, targeted demographic, that's a good question. I'm still trying to figure that out. I've been polling people, trying to figure out who watches my stuff, when, why, how. It's a really great question, Roshan. Um, for me, the Discord is, it's an opportunity to have discussion <laughs> about stuff because a lot of times on social media, all, all there really is room for is just quick, quips, comments, um, things that aren't uh, necessarily deep, robust, or valuable in terms of feedback, discussion. It's really not space to upload your own work, that kind of thing. Sorry, guys, I have to um, check on something real quick. Give me just a sec. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. We just had a little choppy video, video stuff happening. It might still be a little choppy. My kids were <laughs> decided to watch YouTube at the same time. So uh, whenever that happens, things get a little rough. Oh, you're in my Discord? I didn't realize you're in there, Roshan. I didn't realize you're in at all. All right, so now let's take a new layer. And now I'm gonna start you know, adding highlights on things. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna drop the opacity just so I can build up where I need it to be built up. Again, more of a more of a painterly look and feel here. Just kind of a speed paint type thing. Super fast. I will say most of the, I mean, people who watch me are people who want to learn to draw. So if you already know how to draw, um, chances are you've, you know, moved on. But there's always people who want to learn how to draw stuff or maybe you're watching it while, I don't know, baking a cake <laughs> or whatever. Um, I know some people watch it while they're working. So I'm still trying to figure that out, right? So a little shortcut tip here in Photoshop, if you hold shift and draw, if you draw one point and then hold shift, you can click on the next point and get a straight line. Okay, so if you're wondering how I'm doing that, I guess that's the extent of a quote unquote tool that I'll use, um, at least in this highlighting process, process here. Roshan's being a spy. I know, you should like give people feedback and stuff, dude. You're good. If you haven't checked out Roshan's Instagram, you should. Feel free to drop a link. Because I can't look it up right now. I mean, I could, but how rude would that be? Everyone's watching and I'm showing off Roshan's Discord. You're so rude. So yeah, at this point, I'm just taking some white, you know, maybe pulling out some details, enhancing things. Here as we go. And if you paint over the picture, it starts to help the picture feel um, more like, more like a part of the whole scene. Ah, I got you. Yeah, man. I, I didn't realize you're in there. 
I guess that goes to show how often I check it. Um, I'm just trying to, like I said, build a space that people who want to talk about or get visual communication help. One of the be one of the most helpful things I did when I was learning to draw was find people who could give me feedback. Um, back in the day, it was Core 77 forums. Um, you had people like Michael DeTullo, Waikit Chung. You had Mark Tyne Vanderweil, uh, who teaches at TU Delft. Um, just all sorts of great people in there. I remember we would, you know, look at Feng Zhu's sketches and see if we could do similar things, all that good stuff. So trying to think of the best way to do a texture here because I don't want to necessarily go get one on the internet because I'm not prepared. All right, and these lines here, I actually want those to be, I want these beacons to be black. All right. Now, what if what if the scene we ha in the scene we had some more light? Okay, like maybe maybe just a parting in the clouds or something. Let's see if we can let's see if we can uh, fudge that a little bit. Oops. So I'm gonna drop to a layer pretty far back. Actually, maybe not. To make this white, just so I can see it. And I'm gonna change the blending mode to linear dodge. Is it linear dodge? Let's see, maybe overlay. Overlay looks good. <clears throat> Drop the opacity. This is not the effect I want. So I'm gonna play with the blending modes a little bit. I don't know the science behind blending modes, nor, nor do I purport to know <laughs> said science. Um, <laughs> FYI, I I usually just kind of scrub through and figure out what works. Sometimes it's color dodge, sometimes it's green, sometimes it's overlay, um, sometimes it's linear dodge, just whatever looks good, okay? That's, that's kind of what I'm going for. So let's see. Oops. I think I need, let's see, in this case, I'm gonna do overlay. And we'll just drop that opacity down. And I'm going to try to think of the easiest way to do this. I'll just erase part of the, the light here. The thing with Photoshop <laughs> or any digital program, there's always like a ton of ways to do the same thing, right? And, uh, You just kind of have to pick what works for you and roll with that. Okay, so I, I'm gonna use my trackpad here. I just wanna create a dot. And now let's take this dot, make it wide, put it on the grass like so. I'll even duplicate it, rotate it, move it up here. So like I said, maybe just like a little parting in the clouds. Something like that. I'll, I'll probably crop this image in. Might as well do that now. Just make it, oops, make it a little bit less like the size of a piece of paper. More of a 16.9, like so. And now I want to add some texture to my structure. Of course, underneath all this light that we added, let's see, I'm going to just group these together. I think it's those. Call it light. Okay. So now new layer and for my brush, I'm gonna use this dirty airbrush that I made. Just gotta make sure it's the right one. Okay, yep. Yeah. 
So go back to my dirty airbrush here. I think I lost it. Easier to find over here. Just make it nice and big. And then now this layer I want to set to multiply. We'll set it there to start. I can adjust the opacity and just start to, you know, kind of texture, texture things with the brush. What am I becoming an architect, S. Tom? <laughs> uh, not my intention, not my plan at all. What do I like about Procreate that Photoshop doesn't do and vice versa? Um, Procreate has the quick line tool, which I don't use very often, but I did miss it last night. I was designing some um, things. I'll just say some stuff for a client and I needed to do a bunch of ellipses and I kind of missed it for a minute. I mean, I got it done, but I definitely missed it for a little bit. I do like um, the touch functionality. I guess I could get that if I bought the right tablet. So that's not really a, a fault with Photoshop. I haven't done enough exploration on the tilt here to see if that's something that um, is possible. Meaning if I tilt my stylus, so, um, you know, somewhat like this, if I tilt it, is it going to affect my stroke? I haven't messed with that with this Wacom yet. And I don't know if that's a fun, if that's a thing with Photoshop per se. Um, one thing I do like about um, Photoshop as opposed to, why are you giving me grief? Photoshop as opposed to Procreate is, Procreate has layer limits, whereas Photoshop, you can make a file with a thousand layers if your computer can handle it. But I feel like those limits are a lot more um, frequent you could say on Procreate than they are on Photoshop. So all right, I'm just making a selection here because I'm adding kind of this greenish light starting to anyways and Oops, there we go. So I'll just kind of paint this in like so. I know I'm not on the right layer, but I can always make a selection like so just to clean it up and then back way down on the opacity. Let's do a little color dodge, make a new layer. And now I'm gonna take a pencil and just Just kind of add to things. You know, stuff like this. If there's light coming from this, it's going to affect other objects. So you'll have a little bit of a glow. Yeah, I got to figure out what to do with here. I don't really know. Um, and probably something I'll finish, you know, later or um, 
because I don't want to bore you guys too much with the same drawing. Or, I mean, if you want to see me take this to like a higher fidelity, that's something I can do as well. It's up to you guys. I don't, I don't love spending a long time on a drawing, so it's certainly part of it. Part of my thinking, I should say. This is Sketch Day Live. Thanks for joining. We're live on Wednesdays, Sundays, Fridays. Today is Sunday. So of course we're live. I think I'm gonna add some fog over the building. Maybe just a little bit. All right. You know, if something's glowing under here, you're gonna get at least on this edge. Something like that. And let's see, I kind of want some foliage, things like that, you know, maybe something in the foreground, um, just to kind of help this out. But let's just finish up here. I feel like it's kind of in this weird in between of um, painterly and sketchy. And so I've got to kind of do a few things to kind of bring it back. So not really feeling that. OK. There we go. That's better. So just something to here and there pull it back into Sketchland so to speak, or at least sketchy, speedy color painting thing, <laughs> whatever that looks like. All right, we'll just add some, I mean, this is, this really goes back to, I think I've mentioned this before, but if you draw big, right, you don't have to worry so much about details because when I when I zoom out of what I'm doing here you'll see that it adds detail to the area but because I'm zoomed out it makes it feel more cohesive and all together all right I'm gonna lock this light stuff uh, let's lock that group so I can pick my blue here it's a little bit too blue under there. Just a little bit. All right, so what if the house here or not house what if this structure had like some green mossy stuff on it um, I'm gonna take from the foreground and I'll take this stuff and we'll use it up here you know maybe a part maybe part of this has um, some stuff growing on it just kind of chop that together and let's go ahead and play with some blending mode, see what we like. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I can erase, I think. Why is it not letting me erase? Oop, wrong layer. All right, so erase a little bit. Okay, add some texture. Then I also want to 
erase using this dirty airbrush for now. I've got more coming. <laughs> Just something I'm working on. All right, eraser. Keep going back to the brush panel, but why is it doing this? Keeps going back to brush. Eraser. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Photoshop was messing with me. Okay, now it should work. What? Eraser. <laughs> Supposed to you be able okay, there we go. I'm supposed to be able to use any brush to erase, but it keeps switching back to the brush here. Alright. That's annoying. I'll have to figure that one out. Um that's a weird, weird thing. That's really weird. It's like I can't. Some of that. Uh, yeah, this this is weird. This is really really weird. Okay, well I'm gonna ignore this for now, and we'll just keep going. If you don't know what I'm talking about, um, historically when I've used Photoshop, I'm able to take any brush and use that as an eraser. But for whatever reason, it's just not letting me do that right now. So can't figure out, can't figure out what's happening there. All right, let's go ahead and light just a little bit of this little probe thing. So I've, I've picked, I've picked the same blue, bluish color that the clouds have, right? Cause that's, that's where the light's coming from. Just using this to, to light our objects. Like so, we'll get highlights in where we need them. Yeah, it's really weird. Um, if you guys know what I'm talking about, it's really, really weird. So if you know why that is, let me know. Let me know the error of my ways. The other thing I did this week, and I'll get this video up, is if you've been watching the channel, I... I designed and modeled, meaning in a 3D computer-aided design program, made my own pair of sunglasses, and I actually 3D printed those, so I'll, I'll show the process of what that involved and also putting them together. So I'll show that in a video if you're curious about that. I guess I could upload the file. We'll see. Yeah, this is really weird. Apps like doing weird stuff today. Monotech says, are, rep are repeatographs really worth the cleaning? I don't know because I don't use them, but if anyone has and wants to chime in, feel free. Let me know. All right, so I've got this thing going on. Let's see if I can take some of these clouds from the original photo. Okay, so there's our original photo. I've got, I guess this was a panoramic photo, um, but I'm gonna take some of these clouds. We'll see what we can do here. And maybe, yeah, I think I can use these. So let's desaturate and then I'm gonna crank the levels up here. Let's transform this and flip it because I want to create a little bit of a fog effect. 
I mean, if Photoshop will let me erase with my dang texture brush here, it's so weird. It is so weird. Yeah, eraser. Wow, this is really odd. Okay, I guess I have to pick it from here. This is just different. I think maybe just there's just some weird glitch in my Photoshop. Um, yeah, well, no, it's not letting me do it. This is, this is odd. Okay, eraser, I'm supposed to be able to hit my brush here and then pick something. Okay, it's letting me use that one. It's just not letting me use the airbrush. So I think I'll just mask it for now. I never use masks, but I'm gonna use a mask now. Let's turn this to screen. You'll kind of see what happens. <clears throat> All right, so I have have this mask selected. And like I said, I want there to be a little bit of fog. I'll figure out what's wrong with the, the app here. It might just be that I need to reset or um, reload my Photoshop a little bit. Okay, so we can kind of play with this a little bit, see what works. You know, maybe there's some ground fog too. Play with the opacity. Do I do online courses? I, <laughs> you know, it's a good question. Why are you guys making me spill all the beans? Yes, I'm working on that. Um, so hang tight. What would you be interested in though? I'm curious. If I were to do something online, what for you would you be interested in? Like, is it basic stuff? Is it uh, stuff like this? What would you be most interested in? Thanks, Tom. All right, so we got some fog up in there. We've got our main thing. Um, I feel like I need more contrast in the structure. So I'm gonna see if I can help that a little bit. So select my structure here and then below the light and above everything else, I'm just gonna start, let's see. Maybe I can do a gradient actually. Maybe I can just do a gradient here. Something like that, just to help with the contrast. And then, yes, absolutely, that is coming. <laughs> Which I guess by me announcing that now, puts the pressure on, but that's that's one of the things I am working on. Um, and I'll, I'll do it in a way that makes sense for everyone. Like, one thing I've found with courses is they can be very expensive. And so I want to make sure if I do something, it is accessible. Let's see here. Let's do, I think I can do multiply. Drop my opacity. 
Yeah, my keyboard shortcuts aren't working as well as they normally. I don't know. For I think I think this session of Photoshop's just a little messed up right now. Anyhow, um, courses can be expensive, so there's that. And then, you know, trying to decide like who wants to see what, what makes sense, all things worth considering. Ultimately, I hope I hope to not have those be limited just to drawing like it might be How to land your first design job. That's a course, <laughs> you know things like that. So um, Yeah, exciting stuff ahead. I'm having fun Hopefully you are appreciate all the contributions. Like I said shout out to the patreons And others who have contributed not everyone's a Patreon, and that's okay. If you do become a Patreon, I will send you a sticker, however. Just a token of appreciation, you could say. To say thank you for your support. Okay, I'm just adding a little bit of shadow here. This I will knock the opacity down on, so I'm not super worried about it. I probably should finish <laughs> this little conduit on the outside of the building here as well. All right, Tom. Sounds good. In the meantime, while I am getting that ready, I do offer tutoring as well. So if you have a more immediate need, let me know. Be happy to help out there. Okay, I'm just trying to, like I said, get some shadow here. Yeah, all my keyboard commands are weird and I don't know why. It's like even my shortcut to uh, change the opacity on a layer isn't working today. but I promise you it works normally. If you play with the number keys while you're using Photoshop, All right, something like that. I could probably spend another, I don't know, a few hours on it, figure it out. Um, this area in particular, let me just erase a bit. You know, some of the lighting, all that stuff I could work on, but we're gonna move on to our next sketch, we'll which will probably be the last sketch. So I'm gonna do uh, something robot related. So throw me some ideas. We'll, I'll keep this one a bit more uh, sketchy.